here we have uh, Donald Pleasance. Good old went, Donald Pleasance. Who, who went on to be the best part of a uh, continuing series that just got worse and worse. He was always the best part because he got crazier and crazier as the movies went along. He is overacting so much in Halloween 5, it's great. Well, that, that was his final one, right? Halloween 6 was his final one. That's where they, six? Okay. they shot the movie, and it was so terrible they went and did reshoots, but he had died by the time they did the reshoots, so they did this really awkwardly edited ending to the movie where he says, I have some business to attend to, and then they just cut to the, the Michael Myers mask on mm -hmm. the ground, and you hear him yell yep. off camera. <laughs> I, I, saw, I saw that movie in the theater. I did too, yeah. And I was like, what? Yeah, that was that was. I think that was shortly before Scream, like, was, kind of revived yeah. horror movies. I remember seeing Halloween Six and uh, Hellraiser Bloodlines. Oh, I the think, fourth one in space. In the yes, I I think in, in <laughs> theaters, and it was like no one was in there. Yeah, no one saw those like the tail end of the '80s, early '90s horror movies, and then Scream revived the horror genre. Yeah, but. I remember, like, they throw the mask on the ground, and you hear just some crew member just go, ah! No, it is him yelling. It's, oh, it's, audio, from, it's audio from the original uh, version okay. of the ending. And then uh, then it cuts to black, and a credit comes up that says, In memory of yeah. Donald Pleasance. It's the most horrible way to yeah. end your career. <laughs> so sad. Poor Donald Pleasant. <laughs> gotta buy groceries. <laughs> we gotta pay the... <laughs> what, what is the original ending? Oh god, it's this whole thing with this cult, and there's like magic stones, <laughs> and, and Paul, Paul Rudd is in it, before Paul Rudd is anybody. Paul Rudd plays the grown-up version of the little kid who's being babysat here. Which reminds me, you mentioned Hellraiser Bloodline. Yes. Do you know who's in that movie? Mm, I, uh, I... Adam Scott from Parks and Recreation. Oh, is he? I, it might be his first movie. He's really young in it, but yeah. All, the, all these modern actors that started out in horrible horror sequels. Yeah, they should bring back Pinhead. I'm sure they have on, on, on home video. There, uh, There's so many Pinhead sequels, like direct-to-video sequels. Even I stopped paying attention to that series. So soon, without even saying goodbye. Isn't it kind of funny what happened to the Halloween series, though? It started off it's just about a serial killer, Michael Myers and Crazy Man, and then you get genetic engineering, and apparently it <laughs> almost ended with cults and magic stones. Yeah, yeah. Paul Rudd lit, puts the magic stones in a circle on the ground, and then when Michael Myers walks into it, he's paralyzed, and he can't move anymore. Did that happen in the film? That happened in the, the original ending. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah. As I was going to say, I don't remember anything about the sixth one. Yeah, no, the, the cult stuff is still in there. I remember it's the, just terrible. The fifth one, I think the little girl's name was Jamie. Yeah, and, there was, and it was she uh, takes Laurie over. Strode's daughter. Yeah. She's in the fourth one, too. And they, and that's how the fourth one ends, or the fifth one ends, I can't recall. The, where. the fourth one ends like this one begins. Yeah, where she's where in a clown She's in a clown costume, yeah. and I thought that was an interesting ending, and then they completely blew it with the next one. Yeah, I remember this is Yeah, this is probably out of the uh, the the big franchises of that era like this jason and freddy this is probably the worst franchise you think so i think so because most of the sequels are, are kind of bland and then they get stupid it does like the, even I, the the friday the 13th movies are worse but they're more entertaining because that series was yeah. junk from the start That was a ripoff of this. The first Friday the 13th is just a ripoff of Halloween. Really? Admittedly so by Sean Cunningham. Yeah, he's hmm. like, they watched this movie. They looked at all the techniques used as far as the camera work goes and the killer's point of view shots and, and just did it again. Well, <laughs> pardon my ignorance um, because I can't, I, I, I kind of remember the first Friday the 13th. I, I, don't, I haven't seen it in a long time. It's boring. Jason is not in it. It's more of like a psycho story, like a drowned kid uh, and his mother is doing all the killing, right? Yeah, it's more of a mystery through most of the movie, yeah, even though it's not psycho. a mystery you could guess. Um, but then it, it's revealed, yeah, it's Jason's mom. She's out for revenge because her son drowned in the lake. Um, 
And then how does that morph into the next one, uh, uh, eight foot tall cane hotter with the hockey mask on? Oh god, it doesn't make any sense, because then the, well, the end of the first one, they just wanted a cheap jump scare, even though it makes no sense. And Jason just jumps out of the water at the end. And in the first one? In the first one. The, the main girl gets away, <laughs> she kills Pamela Voorhees, and she's lying out in the boat in the water, and then for no reason, the little Jason, the, the Jason that drowned in the lake 20-some years ago, jumps out of the water and grabs her. That's the end of the movie. Hmm. And then the second one, it's revealed that Jason, now he's a grown-up, now he's an adult man, has been living in the woods for the last 20 years? Where it's like, so you weren't dead, you didn't drown in the lake, so why did you just uh, hide from your mom in the woods for the past 20 years? Because he's a crazy man. It doesn't. Nothing about the, that series makes any sense in the initial setup of it. But but this series started off like this shouldn't be a series. This is a standalone no. movie. Yeah, it's such a simple story. Crazy guy kills people because he's crazy, and that's well. It. Well, that's that's why they did what they did with the third one, where mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with Michael Myers, and it's about haunted. Were they, were they haunted masks or were they? they, they, they <laughs> Oh man! I, I, I don't really want to get into the third one yet. Yeah. The third one is amazing. Maybe we'll talk about it a little bit later. But all but. right. <laughs> well, I, this one's less about like a, a quote-unquote serial killer, and more so like the embodiment of evil. Right. It, yeah. It has a more. It operates on a different plane his, than his just a, His motive is that he's pure evil. Yeah, sort of like the uh, the faceless killer. Yeah. And I think that's what they were going for, and then and then to to um, make a series out of that is con contradictory to the original mm -hmm. idea yeah is that pu pure evil exists and then it's gone and that's like okay now he's a guy and we gotta put him on the truck and, <laughs> and then it becomes a then it becomes schlock after that <laughs> but not schlocky enough i think that's the problem those halloween yeah. sequels are kind of like part four is okay but i it's like kind part of four quite a bit part four has its moments and the ending is pretty good uh, other than the first one part four is one is my favorite oh yeah yeah Turn of Michael Myers. It's almost like a remake. Yeah, the well, it was one. sort of like part three. Everybody hated yeah. Michael Myers wasn't in it, so like, here's Michael Myers again. We're not going to take any risks. <laughs> it's just him doing his thing. Yeah. Barely remember what happens in two. I remember they make it an extension of the same night. It, it ends exactly yeah. where this one, uh, or starts where this one ends. Yeah. And uh, Laurie Strode Mostly, goes to the hospital and does nothing for ninety percent of the movie. All I remember is. This, uh, she or Donald Pleasance turns on the gas line and lights a match, and yeah. Michael Myers starts on fire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Loomis and Michael Myers yeah. die in an explosion until part four, when he just has a tiny uh, scar on his cheek. Yeah. And then he <laughs> survives a gas station explosion. Yes, <laughs> he's just as uh, uh, adept at survive survival as Michael Myers. He's is. fireproof. He's fireproof. <laughs> Do they explain where he gets his jumpsuit, that it's a mechanics, or is that, that specifically in 4? Uh, do they do, even explain it in 4? They do. Okay. It's a garage mechanic. Oh, that's right, because he's, he's all bandaged up, and he yeah. goes there and he steals it. Yeah. yeah. No, they don't in this. This but is just, he just gets an outfit. Somewhere. This is this is why you need a prequel remake, where Rob Zombie explains that uh, Ken Forhey is taking a dump, and Michael Myers uh, punches him to death and then steals his mechanics jumpsuit. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's why you need a prequel remake. Prequel remake? The Rob Zombie movie. So you're saying you haven't seen it? I know it's it. a remake. I haven't seen it. It's a prequel too. The I, first, you know, the the creepy opening of this. Yeah. Where you see him stab his sister. That's the first 45 minutes of the movie. Okay. Um, and then the second half of the movie is almost a scene for scene remake of this movie, but sped up because the movie's half over. Oh. <laughs> that's the movie. And Michael Myers lives in a crazy house with like a drunken father. Yeah, it's a white trash family. And His mom's a stripper. It's it's yeah. horrifically yeah. bad. Yeah. Although I, I don't mind the first half of it I was just because it's say that. so disconnected yeah. from Halloween. The first half where you get a little backstory is fine as its own little weird movie. Yeah. If it wasn't branded with a Halloween name on it, but but then it shifts focus to Laurie Strode and her friends, and you realize that Rob Zombie hates teenagers. Because all those characters are so horribly written. Yeah. They're so shrill and awful. Is it is it more interesting if Michael Myers comes from an abusive father? No, it's or... not more interesting if there's all this backstory. Yeah, I mean, isn't it more, you know, he's just, he's just a crazy guy. Is he yeah. a normal family and yeah. one day just stabs? Well, again, it's, it's a different type of movie. Michael Myers could be, in one version of it, he could be a kid who grows up in an abusive, drunken family that turns into a psychopath. This one, it's it's... He's 
he's a person, but he's pure evil. Yeah. And there's no soul. You know, I'm, I'm just, asking. I'm asking which is more interesting. This. Yeah. The non-Rob <laughs> Zombie. <laughs> I was I was asking to start a discussion, not to be belittled, Mike. The 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 answer is this one. Yeah. End of discussion. Because uh, you know. Yeah. Oh, the whore with the big tits hanging down to her knees. Maybe I'll choke the chicken, purge my snorkel all over them flappy-ass tits. Rob Zombie could have handled, <clears throat> uh, like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where it's all crazy hicks that are just yelling all the time. Like, that's yes. more appropriate. But classy, classic, like, tension, yeah. that's not his thing. He's oh. more for blunt stupidity. Movie is it House on the End? How the Hills Have Eyes? The Hills it. Have Eyes, where, where something like, like that. The, yeah, the, uh, nuclear uh, uh, mutated rednecks, right? Is yes, that, isn't that the plot? Yeah, yeah. The Halloween subtle subtlety is not Rob Zombie's uh, strong point. This this film by itself is is perfect. Yes, it's fine. Anything outside of this, I'm fine with Michael Myers as a Freddy uh, Krueger type <laughs> comical villain, just stabbing people for no reason, just for fun. Leave this one alone. Don't remake it. Yeah, you know, Rob Zombie should have made Michael Myers Part Eight. Michael My they already did Michael Myers in space, didn't they? Or no, Michael Myers never went no, to Jason space. Jason went to space. Jason went to space. Leprechaun went to space. Hellraiser went to space. So well, why why is it all of the horror movies go into space when they get really desperate? Th that's about? exactly why, because they're desperate. I don't know why space, actually. Like, what makes you think Jason should go to space? Well, Jason, they, they, they ran out of ideas entirely yes. By, yes. by the end. Um, Michael Myers didn't quite... I, I think it, it's just such a simple concept, you can't really expand upon it too much. No, you have to add stupid shit like he's the, the pawn of a cult, but you have mm -hmm. to keep it grounded in somewhat of a reality. Yeah, Freddy and Jason, you could kind of go off the, off the tracks a little. Yeah, well, especially Freddy, because yeah. he's more uh, imaginative, that's more fantasy. And there's a dream dream element to it. Yeah, yeah. you have uh, the wizard master in part three shooting lightning bolts out of his fingers, and you can get away with that type of stuff. The only the only thing they could get away with is in Halloween Resurrection when they did the webcams, and it was broadcast on the internet. Oh yes, back in uh, <laughs> 2003. Yes. 2003, when the internet was new, uh, they, there was a slew of horror films based around webcams. You're alive on the internet. Uh, and I remember fear.com? Yeah. And I remember you joking. Actually, you might have been because we saw Halloween 6 together. Or Halloween Resurrection together. Yeah. And I think you joked about there should be a movie called murder.com. Yeah. And then a couple months later, fear.com trailer uh, showed up. Yeah. Sorry, did that scare you? Now remind me, what's his motivation for stalking Laurie in the first place? When this movie was made, he had none. In part two, they introduced the idea that uh, Laurie Strode is Michael Myers' sister. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, that, that was not uh, meant to be the case in this first movie. John Carpenter threw that in the sequel because he's like, there's no more story. What else do I do? I'll throw this in there. And then the third movie, if we want to talk about the third movie, that's where he said, we got to get rid of this Michael Myers character. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn the Halloween series into an anthology series, which I think is a great idea. Every mo every year, you have a new movie, completely unrelated, that's comes just out, about the season of Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, of, yeah, it's the season of Halloween. Weren't you telling me that you thought hate for Halloween 3 was unwarranted too, but it's a, it's a good movie, or was that somebody else? Halloween 3 is insane and wonderful. It is such a weird movie. The plot of the movie is uh, this crazy Irish man that runs a, uh, a factory that produces Halloween masks, steals a chunk of Stonehenge <laughs> and chips off pieces of it and puts it in a little disc on the inside of the masks he makes. Yeah. And when a subliminal signal comes out over the TV while you're wearing the mask, it sets off something in the Stonehenge chip that turns your head into bugs. And he wants to do that because he hates children. <laughs> 
And that's the plot of the movie. It is so amazing. The third commercial, it's still on, please. Take off the third channel, the third channel, it's still running. Stop it, please, for God's sake, please stop it. There's no more time. You've got to, please, stop it. Stop it now, turn it off. Turn it off. Stop it. 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 H2O, it's not a great movie, like the slasher elements are kind of bland, but the movie works as, as like a, like, Laurie Strode confronting, literally I remember that much, yeah. confronting her demons, and facing off against Michael Myers, she chops his head off at the end, it's great. And then the next movie, she's in an insane asylum, and Michael Myers shows up, and she falls off the roof of the building. And that's the end of her story. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> no. The sequels are so bad. At least there's funny bad stuff in most of the, uh, the Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street sequels. Well, M Nightmare on Elm Street movies are straight up comedies. After yeah, they um, get more more silly, but they're always two. imaginative. They're more creative. That's yeah. why I always liked them as a kid more than these other series. Yeah, and I love the subtle little look on his face, like he's not surprised that Michael Myers is gone. Music kicks in, and then we just get a little montage of all these shots of places he's been. He could be anywhere. It's so great. I hope we get to see that house again, and I hope Buster Rhymes is involved somehow. <laughs> Trick or treat, motherfucker. No. That's what everybody said when this movie came out, right? I can't wait to see the next one. I hope Busta Rhymes is in it. Me? Huh? Motherfucker. 